Can you guess who does smoke destruction and cool looking particles are done in movies and TV shows? Can you guess it? It is done by FX artist. I got an opportunity to do an interview session with Roberto Rodriguez, an FX specialist, who creates magical things using his impressive FX skills for movies and TV shows. He has been in the industry for more than 5 years, worked on projects like Aquaman, Tomb Raider, Jumanji and Game of Thrones to name a few. This interview is going to have a lot of valuable information about being an FX artist and roles of FX plays in the industry. So take a pen and paper and take some notes. Let's get started. Cheers dude, thanks for the invite. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, I'll just share my screen quickly. A lot of work that I've done over the last five years in my career. So I was going to, uh, I've got it in RV. So this is a review tool that we use at, uh, at all the studios. So I was going to go through and say what was real, what was fake, what I did, um, and so forth and so forth. Uh, challenges, how long things took. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions uh, going forward. Uh, so yeah, I'll jump back to the beginning anyways. And yeah, if you want to ask, tell me how much time I've got if I'm wearing a bit. Hey, hey, Roberto. So before you talk about your real, uh, can you sure. like, uh, talk about your background, like how we got into movie industry, what inspired you to get into FX, you know, uh, like, you know, where did you go to school and everything? So that will be really useful for other people as well. Yeah, sure. No worries. So um, I'm from the UK. Um, so originally I used to do industrial design for four years. Uh, found myself going towards more of the visualization aspect of it. So I ended up doing my master's at Bournemouth University in the UK and then uh, found found effects. Didn't really know what it was before I went to the course, found effect and realized how extremely difficult it was and, fa and fell in love with it instantly. Uh, I then went to Toronto uh, like five years ago, did the internship program at SideFX. So Houdini, the software that I use. And yeah, it's been pretty much awesome doing great movie stuff. And now I'm in TV, so I wanted to switch up a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's the short that's the short half of it. So um, so yeah, do you want me to get cracking? Yeah, yeah, sure, go yeah, the, go for it, yeah. Stuff, yeah, yeah, so... Um, so this shot here in Aquaman that I did, I was um, I was in Melbourne, Method Melbourne at the time. And um, so Momoa is CG. Um, that explosion is actually real, but it was a really, really small explosion. So it looked like nothing like this. So like uh, that bell that flies out, that CG. Um, so I pretty much added a ton of debris to this to make it. And I was like even doing like very much detailed stuff like this section here when you see this explode out all those rocks so that's all me and like this roof as well uh you see like here in this section here uh this was also me that did it so i can't remember how long this took in total but i know every time i showed a version they're like more 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 so um so that was really really cool to work on this so um so yeah the next shot um so this was just mirror jumping over and this guy that lands Hey Roberto, right uh, right. I'm gonna. Uh, I want to uh, ask some questions based on like uh, the Aquaman shot you showed me. So sure. when you were doing this kind of effects, like uh, what kind of like uh, launch you get? Like launch, like how they would say like, oh, we need to have this explosion, or like what would be your references, or like how do you start like from scratch? Because that looks like it looks realistic, but like what would be like your inspiration or references? You know, you find. From? <laughs> So there was little bits of debris in the plate already. So when they shot this, there was like some of these rocks that were flying out. So I, so I understood what it's going to look like. I understood the timing. I understood the animation. I understood the feel of the shot before. So I didn't start from scratch like some of the other shots I'm going to show you later on, like in Jumanji, mm -hmm. when it's completely CG. So everything's a computer. So from the get-go, I had a really good understanding of, okay, we want more but you've got a base to go on. So for instance, you probably don't even see, but like this rock here, this one, I actually had animated that. So uh, they were like, oh, we, we really want a big rock going across. So I was like, okay, obviously I'm not going to do that in a simulation because it's just complete overkill. So I ended up just hand animating that one rock and then comp got some nice wispy fire that comes out of it. Uh, and it just sold it instantly. Like you wouldn't even think that was CG unless I told you. Yeah. So. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Like so, okay. So shot like this. So you did the animation effects on the smoke and fire as well. So you are responsible for yeah. the entire shot. 
Uh, yeah, apart from like all this laser beam, uh, like all of this stuff here, mm -hmm. that was some that was somebody else. Oh, nice. But yeah, in terms of like all the other effect stuff, then yeah, it was it was pretty much me completely. Oh, nice. That looks pretty cool, man. Cheers, dude. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next shot. Fantastic. Yeah. So this one, um, this was really really fun. Was, my whole experience on Aquaman was really fun. They basically just told me like. Okay, we've we've got all of these shots. It was a really really small team at the time because um, Christopher Robin was in the studio as well, Winnie the Pooh. So all our efforts were actually on that at the time. Um, so there was like four people um, on this, and yeah, they gave me this shot. And so all of the door and like all of this stuff here, this there wasn't anything there. So um, it's pretty much all CG in terms. I think th some of these bits here were animation, so I to understand the timing because it was like three of these shots that looked like this, so they had to do continuity. So, um, so they would give me those, and then I would just like strap everything. So all the glass, additional uh, pieces of wood, I'd strap that all to the animation, and that would give me the feel of him actually breaking through it. Nice. So the animation was done by the animation team. So they give the geo to you, then you do the FX, right? So I also see there is like, you know, three or four elements which are combined in the chart. Like, so there is like the rails, you know, the glass and the door. So yes. like, how do you approach it? Like if there is like different elements in the chart? Um, for something like this, I guess I'd go with like the heaviest stuff first, right? Because light stuff's just going to bounce off. Um, bounce off hard stuff like real world physics so um so like the rails is really really heavy but i think that was all taken by animation so it was a few years ago since i've done this shot but all my stuff as long as i use that as a collider against all the heavy stuff then it's just going to work right yeah it's like if that door actually broke with the rails so i wasn't really worried about half the stuff i was just worried about making the glass and the wood look good and worry about the rest of it later yeah it does look realistic, you know. Wow, it looks pretty cool. Thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, let's uh, move on to the next shot. <clears throat> yeah, sure. So, yeah, this this guy runs through a load of doors and stuff. So, um, I was... Oh, two six. This guy. So, it was pretty much a cardboard door that he runs through. And I... I got like these pieces here as he went through and basically painted frame by frame so like one frame would be like that then it would be the other one and then i would emit on that frame when it hits through and then i i had him as a geometry running through the door so i actually got the velocity of the character pushed through the door and then admitted based on the painting i've done it was a bit of a weird thing technique but i just did it on the fly and I literally did maybe one or two versions of this and they're like yeah perfect thanks yeah so uh, uh, when you say you painted like what do you mean by that yes so i mean like um i had this door right but the door wasn't broken in 3d mm -hmm. so i painted on the door that wasn't broken and then i admitted only from the painted areas oh okay makes sense yeah is that so then as it broke through it gave the illusion that there was actually stuff emitting from those certain sections that you see on the plate, which is broken, but it wasn't. It was just me emitting some wood from the things that you see. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And then, yeah, we'll lie in all the rest of it, give it to common. Yeah, they were super happy with it, so I did that one really quickly. Um, so, yeah, this one, this one was an interesting one. It's when they shot it, um, two six. Yeah, so when they shot this, there was this huge blue screen that was like here. <laughs> and typical, you know, on set filming, the blue screen came to like here. So so they so I, they had to, we had to replace all of the smoke. So there was originally smoke there, but I so I actually ended up just completely replacing it and this is all CG now. This is all smoke I did. Oh nice. So so I'll play again, but all that drifting stuff, yeah, that's CG. And then um, the stuff that's happening on the roof as it gets hit off. That was one of the artists that built the setup who was developing it for quite a while. And I was running it and just adding some more extra turbulence mm -hmm. and some wind to make it feel like the background stuff, which I've already done. 
Nice. So uh, those kind of smokes, like, do you guys have like uh, already pre-made, like presets or anything, or it's just like all your Udini system you create from scratch? Um, smoke is probably my favorite thing to do. So um, I would just always do it myself. I've got like pre-existing stuff that I've made in the past. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, just a shader or lighting or stuff like that it was pre-existing would be very helpful. But it's it's very blown out this shot. So lighting is just like direct sunlight so there's not really much going on there as well cool all right yeah yeah so this was this was a little bit of a this was a little bit of a fun one her skimming across the roof so i tried like loads and loads of stuff to get these tiles to make to feel natural so I, i had her as a 3d model so it was like a track so i had her in in my software doing what she's doing and i had the roof but her foot digging in and her body wasn't really given a natural sort of dig on the roof. Mm-hmm. So I ended up just using an actual box and parenting the box on the tri- on the corner to her feet, to her foot, and the box is actually just scraping up all of the stuff. So power of a box. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I activated all of this roof as she landed on it, and then I got the box and I pushed the box and activated it at the same time. And then I admitted smoke, grit, debris everything like it must be about five layers just on the roof alone and yeah i did the explosion in the background as well so cool so yeah that was super fun so what have i got here right jumanji so um i put this rpg shot in just because uh i love it even though it's super super fast but yeah so it's just a spot it's just um a flash and then, yeah, just a load of smoke. But, yeah, that's all CG. So it's like, boom, all that smoke and all of that. The guy's just on the plate. The guy's just holding on to the thing, not doing anything. So it's quite funny when you see it without the effects. <laughs> yeah, they have to act it out, right? So Yeah, exactly. It's really, really funny. Um, so, yeah, so this is probably the, the, my favorite shot I did on Jumanji. Um, very quickly, two six. Yeah, so this one was this one was a little bit of a bit of a challenge because of the, what the camera's doing and how we're moving and everything was like moving diagonally in space. So, um, so the so I start from the back. So the first cache that I did was this this one here. So this one goes woof and goes straight up the canyon. So that was like the impact first of all, and then I've got like I think four or five like in got one in the background. I've got like another one here. I've got like another one, like just pulling up here. And then when it does the bank, I've got this element that goes across camera, which like perfectly silhouettes. So you can only see like half of the helicopter. So it was a very artistic driven shot that I had to control a load of simulations to drive this sort of look. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, with the leaves and all the rest of it, you know, it was, um, it was a lot of fun, but it was a lot of work, this one, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, yeah, Roberto. So it kind of looks like this shot would be like a really challenging shot for you. But like, how did you find references or like, for example, like when the helicopter hits the rock, like there was a spark happening. Like, how was your like, uh, what kind of sure. references do you usually go for? Yeah, that's a good question. So I actually use Formula One and motorbike um, sparks when they crash. So Formula One cars, when they drive over um drive through the track and then the sparks ignite and motorbikes when they crash that was actually my reference for the sparks uh my supervisor loved it as soon as i did that those sparks he went absolutely crazy i'll never forget it um uh in terms of like all the helicopters and stuff like you you build it based on physics and then you put it in a shot and obviously it's not going to work so you have an idea of Okay, it should do this, but have you ever seen a helicopter going through a canyon like this, like this low? Like it's not going to happen, is it? So you're going to have to use a bit of imagination and think about what the helicopter is going to be doing for a shot like this, and sort of assess how it should look in your mind for you know experience. Yeah. I was watching helicopters for a long time. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> I think you build up like quite a visual library in your mind, so it kind of like you know pops up in your you know whenever you work on a shot, it just pops up, I guess. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And I think I also saw a question. So Wenki, like, can you uh, read that question? Uh, it just popped up. Yeah. Uh, hey, Roberto. Uh, hey, uh, has a question. One of your previous shot. Uh, sure. you know, that uh, the roof shot. 
So his question was like, uh, for the tiles on the roof scene, you said yes. the character was a model. Was any of that scene played, or was it all CG? Oh, uh, this is all play. This yeah. this this whole shot, apart from me, apart from like obviously, they had to cut out a piece like this, which was CG. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And then obviously, like adding all this stuff is obviously CG as well. Um, now you say that I'm. They might have done a little explosion in here, but like I said, it was nothing for Aquaman. Like they just gave us it for reference, and we had to amp it up all the time. So, uh, but definitely the the roof that I did was completely CG. That section I drew. Cool. Thank you. No problems. Any other questions? Can I keep going? Uh, this is fun, man. You can go ahead. Yeah, no problems. I'll keep going. Do you have any more questions on this shot as well? Uh, no, we can go to the next shot. <laughs> yeah, sweet. So yeah, this was the second uh, helicopter shot I did on Jumanji, and I've got a little got a little breakdown with it as well. Uh, just to give you an idea of how many elements and everything that was going on with it. Um, So yeah, when you put all the layers, it doesn't seem like that much stuff, but there's a lot of stuff going on there. Like I even had a twig like rotate a camera. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like. So uh, for yep. a shot like this, like um, doesn't the layout provide the camera or you have uh, like create ability to like move the camera a little bit? No, everything's locked, right? Cause they send yeah. it to the client and be like, okay this is what we've done what do you think they're like we love it mm -hmm. put all the stuff in there great go it's pretty much it right so yeah. once it's been approved then um you gotta go <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you gotta figure it out nice but like so it's it's all cg like the entire shot is cg uh yeah this entire shot's all cg yeah okay. like they built the canyon they built everything for it uh, you see it here, like it's completely CG. Yeah, like you can see the one. Uh, like, it, you shall I talk about some Game of Thrones. Yeah, sure, go for it. You haven't seen Jumanji as well? It's a good film. Oh, oh, I didn't have very high hopes for it, but then it came out, and I was like, wow, that was actually really good. <laughs> hey, it so, is a good movie what? indeed. <laughs> totally. So, um, so this was the first project I, when I moved to Melbourne to work at Methods. It was a lawyer at the time. So I was on the project quite late, but I was just helping out just to finish it. Um, and I was pretty much in charge of populating like ash embers for comp elements. Uh, they were rendering like 4k at the time, um, adding smoke, like adding little fires to the floor, pretty much everything just to, uh, fill out the shot. Uh, I think all this fire was me, like all of this stuff here, and then all this big stuff, they actually filmed. So Game of Thrones, they film a lot of stuff. Like, I've never seen any show like it ever that I've worked on. Like, guys on fire running around, things on fire. Like, it's just mad. Um, they spend a lot of money on it. It's very, very impressive stuff. So obviously they shot all this amazing stuff, so they wanted to put it into, um, put it into their shot, so they ended up doing. But yeah, it's super... Uh, it came out really nicely, that sequence. All right. So, um, so some spoilers if you guys haven't seen The Boys, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I did a lot of stuff on The Boys uh, Season 2 uh, that I can talk about as well. Um, so um, I literally just got to... Um, Rocket Science, which is the studio I'm currently at, I'm the effects lead there, and and it was literally like, okay, you have to come in on Sunday and help us figure out this shot, because they filmed a load of stuff, like a lot of it's practical, so they actually blew up guts and everything on set, so all that stuff on the van, some of it's real, um, so it, it was a really, really crazy shot. I think, Venki, did you did you work on this as well? You did, right? Yeah, I worked on this shot. Yeah, super fun stuff. So I just helped fill out the same thing, like gave Venki, I think, 10 different uh, mist and blood layers so he could use them accordingly. And I'm pretty sure he just combined that with stuff that he had. And 
it was just a big mix match of stuff but yeah it came out came out great everyone won't stop telling me how much they <laughs> love this head explosion so <laughs> good job vinky yeah thank you and dinesh worked on this oh on. cool yeah loads of us <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah then i also i've never done crowd before so yeah. um yeah this was like the first crowd sim i ever did so obviously none of the none of this is real i th I think the only thing that was real is, um, well, it's not even real. I think it was just a painting for the ground. They just gave me the ground as a painting and was like, uh, cool. Yeah. We need like 10,000 people in this running away, screaming, their body parts are going to be flying off and there's going to be blood exploding everywhere. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and then so figure it out. So I think that gave me three months to learn how to do this shot and figure it out. So. A really really challenging uh and i yeah i built a blood system on it as well which was really fun so they actually explode based on the size of the person uh and i think i added guts uh arms legs heads to this so yeah super fun uh everyone says they like it as well um, i've seen it so many times i'm not sure i like it anymore but i thought i'd show you guys no, it looks Probably. pretty cool, uh, Robert. So, uh, so what kind of like uh, what kind of software did you did you use like Houdini or what kind of system did you use? Yeah, so I used um, I used Houdini everything, even rendered this in. Oh, actually, uh, I rendered some of it, and then someone a lighter um, rendered some of it as well. But it was all in Houdini. Um, the only problem is crowding Houdini is so new that getting support was very, very difficult, but I was always emailing side effects, asking them questions, and they were very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. But um, it was really, really hot, challenging to get um, any information on crowd was the main problem I had with this. No, it's not like smoke, right? When I do smoke, when I do explosions, everybody's done it. Mm -hmm. But doing crowd is, yeah, no one's done it, really. Yeah. So uh, one more question is like um, sure. you have the uh, the laser cut, like you know it's going random and everything. So the laser yeah. animation was uh, given by uh, given by someone else, or like you figure out like how to do that too. No, I got well. I was when I first started testing, I had just a basic thing that I was doing, and then obviously they want to send that to the client and be like, "How many people do you want to kill? Do you want to kill more people? Do you want it to go further back?" They're like, "Yeah, just kill everybody." <laughs> like, okay, cool. So obviously that's quite an iterative process. If I just do that every time, so somebody else was handling that, giving that, and then giving it to me, I'm like, "Okay, cool. I'll kill everybody there." And then they would see that and be like, "Okay, can we kill some more people at the back instead of?" Um, Instead of there and so forth, you know. So nice. But yeah, I love the show. It's I love season one, and that was one of the main reasons why I moved to Toronto as well to uh, to work on it. Because they told me we got the boys. If you want to work on it, I was like, yes, I want to work on it. <laughs> cool. So um, so yeah, this shot was um, many many moons ago um, when I was probably a, a junior or a low mid. Um, so I didn't do the fire in the background, but I did, um, two six. Yeah. They had these crazy cameras on this show. Uh, they're called a phantom. They can like record at 10,000 FPS or whatever. So they had these crazy rigs that was like going through the building down. They were blowing up stuff and like filming it. So, um, so some of this shot is actually like some of these, some of this smoke and stuff is actually from the plate where they did it and obviously everything else is cg the fire in the background cg that globe is actually real they did that they blew up that globe uh two six and filmed it and then we just put it in but yeah in terms of all the debris and everything that was all me and added some extra smoke here and there and you know just filling it out like i've showed you previously yeah that looks pretty cool Thanks. Um, right. So this was, I did a moon show. So this was the first show that I ever led. I was at Method in Montreal. And it was for Apple TV. It was their first show called uh, For All of Mankind. So it was actually me and another guy. I was leading, I think, five or six people at the time. And I was working on this shot. So I pretty much developed all of the basic setup for it. And then I gave it to another guy. And he did. he developed it further. So he actually did all the rocks landing. Um, but I did all of the sand exploding around the ship, 
I did all the volumes pretty much. Uh, it's like a mixed match of stuff, but um, Apple really liked it. So, gotta be happy if Apple, Apple likes it. Yeah, <laughs> it looks pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, man. Um, yeah, so um, so when I was living in Sydney, I was at Animal Logic and I was working on Lego Batman, which was which was challenging in its own self. Uh, if anybody knows about Animal Logic, it's an amazing company. Like even after all the companies I've been to and seeing their pipelines, Animal Logic is probably the, one of the most impressive companies that I've seen. Um, they pretty much render every half an hour. They, if something's updated, it will just automatically render in 30 minutes. Like every 30 minutes it gets checked. It's, it's a crazy, crazy system. So, um, so I helped develop all this lava and I didn't do this, didn't, didn't develop the look of this ball, but I did the explosion. Like I did the, the rooster tail coming off of it here. Um, and yeah, I did this explosion as well, which was super, super fun. So there's, uh, it was actually a lava sim that I converted to, uh, Lego. So it was all, this is all Lego exploding in front of you right here. Um, and I think I add, yeah, I added just a little, a little bit of smoke, like all of this stuff here, just so it lingers around at the end, just to fill it out a little bit as well. But yeah, it was very, very different from normal visual effects, feature animation. Yeah. Uh, hey, Robert, so like, you know, so far the stuff you were showing us, like it's like more realistic, like how did you transition from like realistic to something like stylized like this? um it's a good question i guess i guess you don't know until you just jump two feet in right mm -hmm. like you try something out you see what Le previous lego films you see the style you try to get in the mood of it you try to live it get your mind inside it and then you you try to you try to do it so yeah. So did I you look, get any concept or anything like that, or you just like you know just R and D like looked at and you kept on kept yeah, on no, get it? Yeah, no, yeah, no, no concept. So the Lego like generally was already done, um, but it wasn't done on this big scale. It was done on a smaller scale, more detailed. So they needed it Lego across the whole city. So I helped with that. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a starting point, and then yeah, I knew everything needs to be bricks apart from smoke. So I actually did like real world sims, like the lava. Like you can see it here um like all of this stuff here it looks like lava right yeah but if you look close it's bricks so that's actually a lava sim that i did that i converted into bricks oh nice so start from real i guess when you're doing something like this and then do the conversion and then worry about the look div later when you've got everything else around it to help it set in nice baby milk really really funny story so my first part of this baby milk the supervisor was like, oh, we're gonna need some baby milk i was like okay yeah i'll give you baby milk so um i did so much baby milk they were like bro i think there's too much baby milk now and i was like it's lego it's not enough baby milk so they told me to turn down the baby milk but my first pass was even better than this <laughs> it was just going for ages like eight like even now at the end it was like yep yeah, then it stopped so um i will always keep that in my reel that shot because it makes me laugh so um so the first project i ever worked on after i finished the side effects internship was the jungle book so um i wasn't actually doing effects at the time i was doing creature effects so or houdini wire solver so i was building rigs the main rigs for pretty much all the hero characters uh i did these two shots this is Shir Khan and killer um did all the te technical fixes pretty much yeah everything you see on the screen on this shot and i think i included the other one yeah, like all the wind, that was all me as well. I built this out for that, for all the characters. Really, really fun. So, um, hey, Robert, yeah. so when you talked about like you're doing rigs and Odini, like what do you mean by that? Yeah, like... yeah sure, no worries. So, so essentially, the, there's a model, right? So, Shere Khan, for instance, Shere Khan is a model. So, there'll be different stages. So, there'll be Shere Khan like walking, there'll be Shere Khan like sitting. So, so depending on that stage, we'll build a setup for it. So it will, the setup could handle the situation of the character. So if he's sitting with some wind, then that would be one rig. So I, I essentially built the rig, which could ha which could be applied to every character mm. in every scenario. So I built like the hero thing that is used. Oh, nice. That seems like really uh, like crazy as well as smart. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of smart people NPC as well that also helped, but I just 
built the Houdini, you know, tool of it, and then I had to show people how to use it. Nice. So that was my first job that I worked on, working on the Jungle Book at NBC in London. That was, yeah, that was a dream come true. I used to love Jungle Book as a kid, so. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. I wanted to show some Top Gun, a shot of Top Gun I did on Wonder Woman, but they're not really out yet, so I shouldn't really be talking about it. So, um, no, that's Maybe fine. Next, like uh, so far, you showed yeah. me like a lot of pretty cool stuff. So, uh, what I'm gonna do since uh, you're done showing a reel, so I'm going sure. to uh, open the floor for questions. But like, ask questions based on the stuff you showed so far, because we have another Q and A at the end, so you can ask like more of a personal question. So, sure. Yeah, let's wait, and if. Um, okay, I, I have a question here. So, uh, Roberto, you said that for the helicopter scene, uh, you used yes. sparks from F1 and MotoGP crashes for reference. But, yes. I mean, aside from the Lego, because that obviously is one of the answers, uh, but have you ever had an FX, any FX shot where you couldn't find any motion or physics reference and where you had to make it up? Good question. Um the thing is, even for this helicopter going through this canyon, I couldn't find any reference for it, right? Like, I, I could find the reference for a helicopter going through a desert. Yeah, no problems. But a helicopter flying this slow, even from ground going this fast, doesn't really exist uh, unless you see it in a movie. So I think with my job, um, I'm always having to think what something has to, even if it's something simple, it's more than likely the reason why I'm doing it is because they couldn't film it in the first place. So I always have to imagine that and I can never really find it. So it's always a process. I don't know if I'm answering the question correctly here, but yeah, it's. No, absolutely. I mean, getting into your mindset about how you get this, you know, from it on the screen is interesting. That's the hard part. Exactly. But it has to be also artistically pleasing and it has to feel like for this, it has to feel dangerous, it has to feel very artistically Real. please exact has to feel like five things right at the same time awesome thanks thank you oh, i think uh you explained everything pretty good that's why there's no question i guess <laughs> <laughs> If you guys shy or something, you guys put the questions in the chat too, so. Hi there, it's Thelma, I've got a question. Hello, Thelma. Hi there. Um, Roberta, which, out of all the uh, films and series, TV series you've done, which has been your most challenging scene? Um, I really, really wish I could show it. Um, it was probably my Top Gun shot I did on the trailer, the late, the trailer that came out last December. I was leading a team between 15 to 20 people and I was doing the biggest shot at the same time on the trailer. Um, you could, I, people every day are saying to me, you look really tired for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, for sure. That was, that was so challenging. I couldn't believe it, but I got through it in the end. So it was really, really worth it. And working on Top Gun was, I wrote, a, I wrote an essay at university when I was doing at Bournemouth about the difference between Top Gun visual effects and stealth visual effects. Um, so being able to work on Top Gun 2 was, yeah, even now it gives me goosebumps. So very privileged I had the opportunity. So when you said like you uh, handle like, you know, uh, 20 people. So as I fix lead, like what is your job role? Like, you know, leading a team, like what exactly you do and how do you, you know, delegate tasks to, you know, the people under you? Sure. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you my normal day in life on TGM, on Top Gun. Sorry. TGM was the code name. Um, Top Gun. Um, so I pretty much got uh, a production assistant following me around the whole day, asking me, what do you need, Roberto? Who should I assign shots to Roberto? I'm in meetings from 10. I'm pretty much in a meeting every hour, um, asking on a sequence, like a sequence dailies. Sequence is like a big chunk of the movie. Um, normal dailies were just variety. 
then I'll have like a meeting with my VFX supervisor. So the VFX supervisor is the guy who talks directly to the client. So that would be paramount. Um, so I'll be talking to him throughout the day. Then the, below him, there would be a CG supervisor. So And there was um, there was two CG supervisors on Top Gun. So I'd be talking to them throughout the day. So I'm pretty much 100% full blast every day. And then at the end of the day, I can sit down and do the shots. Yeah, that uh, seems like a quite a lot of work, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like you have a lot of passion for it. I, yeah, man, I love it. It's yeah. super fun. When we talk about questionnaires, so whenever I bring in a bring in like artists to our stream, I usually ask like ten questions uh, to them so that we can learn better about them. As for people who are working in the industry and who are new to the industry as well, so I'll open the floor for one minute, then I'll start asking questions to Roberto. So let's see, it'll be a rapid fire. Okay. Okay, Roberto. So the first question is. Uh, what what do you think about the CG industry overall? Um, I think it's amazing. Um, if you can think it, your imagination, you can do it, right? Like, I don't know any real industry that you can do the same. Like, you think it, you dream it, you can make it. So that's what makes it so amazing to me. Nice. People get confused what's real. Like, there's the line's blurred now, right? Where it never used to be. Yeah, totally. Um, so the next question would be, uh, what sparked your interest in this industry? Um, I guess striving to always find the pinnacle in visual visualization, because that's coming from a industrial design background. That was a thing that I was always striving for, like trying to make the car look better, trying to make this look better. And then I realized, okay, what's the next step past this once I achieve that goal? Okay, movies, okay, effects. Like every time I go to a studio, studio 90% of everyone in the studio doesn't even know what I do. So it, I find it I find it crazy that I go to work and nobody really knows what I do <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I walk into a building. So um, just always trying to progress and just always trying to learn and be better because I'm never really satisfied with what I do. So uh, I think there's more to give, you know? Yeah, that's nicely said because every artist have to think like that. You know, you should be satisfied about your work. Uh, I really like that. Uh, it's kind of like a quote. Uh, so I'll go to the next question. Uh, what are some challenges you faced before working in this industry? Trying to get in. <laughs> it was it was very very difficult to get into this industry. To be honest, um, obviously in the UK the talent is very very good. You got Dean Egg, you got Frame Store, you got all the big shops there. So, um, and coming from industrial design, switching over to effects and just doing that for like one year masters, um, people were doing undergrads in it for four years. So I had to work, I had to quickly learn those four years that what they learned, I had to cram that into a year. So obviously I didn't sleep, didn't, I just lived it. Um, uh, but then the payoff happened when I got the internship at side effects, I couldn't get a job before that went to, went to Toronto got the internship then everybody wouldn't stop throwing me contracts they were like please come to work for us so um get, getting into the industry was very very difficult for me but i never gave up yeah uh but like uh, you're talking about getting into the industry but your first job is npc because you know that's a pretty good job you have done uh that's pretty awesome thanks man yeah we so, appreciate it yeah so what advice would you give someone entering cg um find first of all is this definitely what you want because i've had to work a lot of hours and if i and if i didn't love this then there's no way i could have done that so the first thing i would say is do you really really want to do this and if the answer is yes then prepare to just sacrifice everything for it and because if you love to do something then you should just give everything you have yeah, that's nicely said, Roberto. Um, okay, next question. How do you motivate yourself as an as an artist? Um, I think I said previously, I'm, I'm never really happy with what I do. So I feel like one day I will say, okay, I'm happy with this. This this looks good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, just 
just you know just keep going until i'm fully satisfied in myself that's cool uh okay the next question um uh, i think you'd be the best person to ask this question because i added this question because a lot of people in the industry they don't communicate with others so uh this question is based on that do you think the artist should have people skills um many moons ago i used to be a bartender so i have i thank that being a bartender for a long time uh and getting my people skills for that way has probably helped me in the long run and being able to move very quickly through the industry plus i've moved studios every year i normally move studios because i get bored and complacent i'm like okay i want a new challenge now this is too easy so um if you're a technical person like a td i guess less so but if you're an artist you're surrounded by people all the time so you really really like you know i always go to people's that people message me they're a bit introverted and say oh can i have this before covid i would be at their desk within 30 seconds and be like right tell me exactly what you want and i'm going to write this down i'm going to give it to you so a lot of people don't have that skill as well but efficiently it will get it done faster so yes i think it's I, th- i think it's a very very good skill to have because it's it's quite rare sometimes to find and it's definitely helped me i agree on it but the first step is to uh, do bartending right <laughs> do bartending yeah have a great time travel yeah. the world <laughs> so the next question is uh, what was the most challenging work have you done i think you uh, talked about it but like you know what's the next most challenging work uh, have you done so top gun was number 1 and then before that was x men um so x men we pretty much did all of the exploding house sequence in 6 weeks in effects um so uh, i'll never forget it i was doing 90 hour weeks for 6 weeks and it took me about 3 months to be normal again like it was it was very very stressful my supervisor was at my desk at 2 in the morning saying you're not leaving until this is finished um it was yeah looking back on it now it was it was really really brutal um uh, but you know like i said i love what i do so looking back here now i'll do it again <laughs> <laughs> yeah that shows your passion right um okay so the next question would be what are some creative suggestions uh, that can be applied in the cg industry i guess i guess the biggest one is always about concept art actually having an idea of what people want to see before we go down the 3d route and try to create it into 3d because drawing a picture compared to making something in 3d some, some drawing a picture in 2d is going to be a lot faster than me making something in 3d so especially to iterate on that as well so so a wall full of 100 pictures and say pick one and a wall full like a 100 clips that i have to make what's going to be faster and save more money yeah it makes sense yeah concept art like should be like you know go to go before we work on a shot or Wait, even yeah even like some of these movies you know how it is they don't even have a story like I, on on some movie i won't say names but i went on vacation i came back and they're like yeah all that work you're doing yeah it's not in the movie anymore i'm like i've been working on that for months and they're like yeah yeah we know here's some more work <laughs> i'm like oh, okay sweet all right <laughs> yeah hopefully you get paid for it uh okay so yeah exactly yeah so the next question would be uh what do you think about uh the future of the city industry well like we were just talking about visual sets um so i think when they're building a set environment in cg it's going to be done very very early now it's going to be done first and then they're going to build all the sets and then we're still going to be at the end of the production but i think the environment stuff's going to be pushed a bit more forward so they can build everything on the fly like they're doing that they've just started and it's super super cool like and a big led 360 screen that they can just do anything they want it's it's amazing yeah that's cool uh, okay the last question would be what are some of your art related hobbies so actually um so between the lines of when I was doing industrial design when I actually applied to Bournemouth they actually turned me down first time and they said I was too much of a too much of an engineer and I was too I wasn't arty enough so I actually went and took a year out when I was 24 uh went back to college with a load of like 19 year olds and studied fine art for one year and they just said go study fine art 
find yourself and come back. And then I really liked sculpture. Uh, I made I made uh, like a table, like some furniture, uh, fine art. I was making canvases. I was getting them cut out, and I was making all the canvases, stretching them myself. Um, so maybe when I buy a house and have a bit more space, I would love to get back into oil painting oh, nice. and uh, sculpture as well because I think it's great. Yeah, it is like when you said industrial uh, designer, I thought like you would be on the more on the designing side. So I thought like you'd be drawing a lot of cars and perspective and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I was, but that's still very engineering for Bournemouth. Oh, like okay. they want you to be full on abstract color photography um, perspective. Yes, for sure. Uh, but they wanted more, you know, they weren't they weren't satisfied. So but it came out great. So I, I love fine art now because of it. So I'm very, very thankful to them. Yeah, I think everything is happening for a reason, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Just got to go with it. Yeah. OK, guys, so I finished the questionnaire. So let's move to the last part of the session. And uh, it's uh, open to the floor. You guys can ask any questions. So one thing that I've been hearing about the expanse was their uh, what do you call this? Their stick it to stick to itness when it comes to to uh, actual space exploration and all that stuff. And this moonshot, for example, how much did you geek out on like the gravity of the moon or like oh my god, particles 1. 6, in a vacuum? No, one point no six newton meters. Up. I'll never forget the gravity the gravity on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, the lack of dust clouds. Everything is uh, straight. What do you call it? right yeah. yeah there's no there's no air resistance on the moon yeah. and there's 1.6 gravity on the moon so so you had uh, to take that into account awesome totally yeah like really like they had um apple actually had nasa people and we were doing like shots in space and they were like yeah you can't do that the planet needs to be on the other side if we're traveling for this distance this will be like this and everyone's just looking at each other like what is going on <laughs> so yeah this was this was very like this is how it would be if it was going to be, you know, so. Yeah, because I noticed, I mean, the, 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 what do you call this, the dust coming up from the thrusters is, I mean, definitely more of a ballistic trajectory rather than clouds. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, I think I actually up using, so do you know FX at all? Uh, no. That's okay. I'm so, you know, like all these points are points for sand, right? So yeah, I used 16 million on that landing only. <laughs> Just the sand that comes out of that one bit is 16 million, not even including all the other stuff that's going on. And every particle on its own ballistic trajectory with no air resistance. And Pretty much, yeah. One sixth of you, Earth gravity, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I, I remember uh, sharing my first version of this and everyone was just like, this looks dope. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun. Okay, Roboto, thanks for coming to our session. It was... No worries. Thanks for the invite, man. It was yeah, really fun. I had great yeah, It had was great time. really inspiring. And uh, I can see uh, the, when you talk and when you act the shots, and I can see like you're passionate about what you're doing. And I also appreciate your patience, people asking questions and everything, and you're, you know, answering it properly. So that was really good. And yeah, uh, thanks for coming here. And yeah, I would like to, you know, uh, bring you on, you know, in future too. So for sure, man. Yeah, yeah definitely. Thanks again for the invite. Take care, take care, guys. Thanks for the questions. Thank, Thank, you. So much. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks. Thank you.